just some general comments here. Certainly, um, you want to give Aurora a lot of credit. I mean, the way that they came out there at the start fighting, you know, got on top of us really 10 nothing. you know, and uh, I think that's one of the things that's been our motto all year is uh, don't flinch. And uh, these guys right here uh, and, the, and our team hung in there. You know, we knew we'd make some adjustments and uh, get ourselves back on track. Obviously, made a couple big defensive plays there to get just to hold them to a field goal to make it 10 nothing. And this guy busts out a big return, kind of gets momentum back in our corner. Offense gets it rolling. And, uh, you know, then we just kind of put the, the pedal on, on the air, the foot on the gas, you know, started making some plays on both sides of the ball. Certainly the play before the half uh, from Parker Rochford there, you know, the pick six. Um, Wow, that was a momentum changer, no doubt about it. And then this guy, I want to make sure I don't forget to mention him, Jordan Downing, putting pressure on the quarterback all day long, uh, which is why he started making some poor decisions and kind of set us up with the, some opportunities to, to steal some, some plays and turn, get the turn, turnovers taken care of. And then, uh, like I said, offensively, you know, just found a way to grind it out, make some big plays. Niall McLaughlin stepped up in a big way out there, playing on, you know, an ankle that was not perfect, certainly. And... Uh, you know, some wide outs that step up. Thor Moxted, some great catches out there. So, like I said, I'm just trying to piece it all together after, uh, after that, that day. But what a, what a special day for our program here. We knew coming back uh, to Waverly, a chance to play in Walson Hoover Stadium again in front of that amazing crowd we just had out there. What a, what a Division Three college football atmosphere that was. And uh, for us to be able to utilize that to our advantage to kind of push us through and over the hump when things got a little tough, that certainly played a big role too. So, you know, super proud of our guys. You know, I certainly love this team, and uh, they've done some special things, and, and I'm, I'm just excited to keep this thing rolling. And like we said down in the locker room, hey, we ain't done yet, so we're, we're planning on keeping it rolling. Uh, where did you uh, decide that Niall was going to be able to play this week? Well, I think probably about 10.30, 11 o'clock this morning. <laughs> so so we, we knew, uh, you know, on, on Thursday he took, you know, was out just throwing the ball around a little bit, didn't really take a lot of reps with our offense. Yesterday he was out throwing the ball around a little bit, just kind of moving a little bit more. Been scooting around on a scooter most of the week. And then today, you know, we, we knew pregame we want to get him out there, get him moving around, see how it felt. You know, I think after we got through warm-ups, he was feeling pretty confident with how he was doing. He was able to move around well enough um, to be able to, you know, protect himself. We certainly didn't want to put him in any situations where we would risk furthering any injury. And, uh, yeah, yeah, he was, he was confident. He had a lot of confidence going. And, you know, one thing I want to, want to say, too, Carter Markham, prepared himself in a, in a great way this week, too. I think all the team believed in Carter as well. If, if Niall hadn't been ready, you saw at the end there some of the stuff we had ready to go for Carter, and that guy can play, too. So, you know, we're in good hands, the quarterback spot. Really proud of Niall for stepping up. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about how that group looks right now and excited to see what they can do next week. Yeah, um, that's one thing that we talked about a lot was we knew that their offensive line was really good and just their offense as a whole was really good. And so, like Coach Winter said, one thing that we always talk about is getting out to a fast start, and we really believe in momentum, right? And so getting out to a fast start, like I said, man, it kind of set the tone for the whole game. Obviously, they did a great job responding, and they found some holes early, right, with uh, those first couple drives. They're kind of dinking and dunking their way down the field. But the way that we play defense is we think that – eventually you're going to make a mistake. And so we just want to make them make plays all the way down the field. And like we talked about, they um, late in the game proved that they weren't quite capable of doing that. And so credit to our guys in the back end. They did a great job of making some adjustments and covering that up. But, yeah, man, um, that start was certainly a um, big part of the game. Yeah, um – Showing a too high look, trying to get the quarterback off his game. I think the snap was a little low. I don't know if he didn't see me come down. Came down, threw it to me. I was just hoping I wasn't going to drop it. And then when I caught it, I was just running as fast as I could to the end zone. Chris, what have the last two weeks been like for you? I mean, because you, you got the touchdown on the uh, punt block last week and, and then to come and do this this week again. Um, I mean, it's... It's nice, but like we talk about not too high, not too low. So you come to the sideline, you celebrate a little bit, but that plays over, you're done with. So you just got to get right back to it and um, get back to the next play because they're going to keep coming at you because we're in the playoffs and every team's a good team. So. Chris and Hunter, did you guys feel you could exploit the middle of their defense today? 
you know, I definitely think that was certainly, you know, part of the part of the game plan today was to be able to, you know, run the football. You know, whether we had Nile healthy or not, you know, that's one of the things I think with the way that they were set up was, hey, we want to be able to run the football, be physical, and establish the run game. And I, I don't know if that was new this week. I mean, I think that's pretty much every week when you got a guy like this. But but certainly, I think that was part of the plan this week was to be able to get that going inside and then start getting some things on the perimeter going after that. And I think the offense did a great job of executing. Certainly, they started making some adjustments to kind of take away some of the things we were doing on the interior. So we got the ball on the perimeter with him, um, you know, in the passing game, as well as, uh, you know, with our quarterback, with Markham when he came in late and certainly found some, some room uh, on the perimeter after they started taking away some of the interior run game too. But, yeah, trying to get that ball on the ground and, uh, you know, pound away, that's, that's Warburg football right there. It's fast and it's physical. So I'll let Hunter give you a little information on that too. So, yeah, I mean, the whole week we prepared to try to gash him up the middle. And we knew that if we could do that, we could take care of the, this whole game. So, I mean, we just kept trying to do our run up the middle plays, you know. And once we exposed them in their front seven, then we just kind of started letting Nile throw the RPOs and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's a big, big change in the game when you can run the ball and then you, got, you can do uh, both ways, 50-50. So, I mean, yeah, the whole week. I trust our line, make those holes open up, and just make some plays happen. So, and that's what we did this week and or this today, and we won, came out with that W. So, fourteen plus, you're one of them. Already made history in a shot to punch a ticket to the national championship game after two weeks. What, what's that feel like? Uh, it feels great. You know, this is a great group of guys that I'm with or our team. You know, I couldn't ask for a better group of guys either. So, it's great. It feels special. You know. But, you know, just keep doing day by day and on to the next week. So. And Coach, you had a very interesting week with that that spot with Nick. So down in the, in the 10 nothing hole against this really good offense, how did the tenor of your sideline change after that? I think the second stop really changed things in that game. Um, yeah, well, so we know when we're at home, okay, uh, we got – uh, it's not just our sideline, but it's the whole, the whole stadium and our young guys that don't get the opportunity to dress for the playoffs. They're right there with us. And um, like I mentioned earlier, we really believe in momentum. And so um, just we talk a lot, too, about when you get the opportunity to make a play, you've got to make that play. And so that was just an opportunity that presented itself. I was fortunate enough to be able to make that play and keep the momentum with our side. Yeah, no doubt. Like I said, we, we want to have balance, right? To, to keep a team that's making a lot of plays in the secondary from being able to break and drive and make plays in the ball, you got to have great balance. And I think they started to have to add in a lot of safeties into the into the run game. They were really spinning guys down to the box, getting down there pretty far. So that, that kind of takes them out of opportunities to create turnovers when the ball is in the air. And so, like Hunter had said, that kind of opened up some of our RPO game. You know, when, when you can run some run pass option, you can run some play action pass the throws are a little less risky when they got you in third and long or second long and they know you're dropping back and you're five step dropping then that's when they can really become more of the ball hawk type of player that's making those those plays and creating turnovers so i think just the running like you said the running attack kind of helped us stay out of those situations where we were having to make some obvious passing situations and downs and so that allowed nile to make some good decisions keep the ball in our hands and protect the football and that's certainly every every week we talk about it like if you win the turnover battle you got a great chance to win a football game. And I think today we, we proved that once again with our offense doing a great job protecting the football and our defense coming with some timely turnovers. And a lot of that had to do with the pressure these guys up front were, were having. And, I, you know, commenting on what Jordan said, I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of people look at, you know, our interceptions and that thing. But the D-line and Jordan, I mean, like you mentioned, that, that really turned the tide. We finally started getting some pressure, hitting that quarterback, got him uncomfortable. And so a ton of credit goes to guys up front, which they've, they've been doing it all year long. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's special. Like I said, it hasn't totally sunk in. I didn't allow myself to think about that too much before the game. I mean, obviously, we knew with Aurora coming in here, we had a heck of a team coming in. And, 
and uh, we had our work cut out for us. And that's, that's been the motto of our team, I think, since we started campus. I, I keep saying this, but one day at a time. And again, it sounds cliche, but that, that is exactly what we do. These guys show up on that day, and they work on that day. They don't really worry about who we're playing, what's going to happen later in that week, what happened in the last game. They worry about that one day, and we go out there and we get after it and we compete. And so, but yeah, I mean, it's certainly special. I mean, like I said, I, that's why I've stuck around here as, I, as long as I have. I mean, Wartburg is a special place. Obviously, we've got great support here, uh, and I, I really believe in, in the Division Three way. I mean, a lot, there's a lot of levels uh, where kids play football for different reasons, but at our level, it's because they love the game and they love each other. And that's my favorite part about this team right now is these guys don't really care who makes the play, who does what. They're all fired up for the, for the next guy, and, and they care about each other, and they love each other. And that's, that's why we've gotten where we are today. And I think that's the thing I'm most proud of is being able to prove that you can be a family that's together and care about each other and, care about, and love playing the game and have this type of success. It's, this whole team isn't just about talent. It's about a culture. It's about an approach. And these guys have been fully bought into it. So that, that's what I'm most proud of. And, you know, we want to keep this thing rolling. So I'm not going to reflect too much on what we've done so far. We're hoping to keep this thing climbing and, uh, you know, on to the next one. I'll let the players talk a little bit about that too. Yeah, um, that's something that's really cool about our group is just truly how together we are. And a lot of teams – will talk about being together and they'll talk about their culture. But I think that we really live it. And that's just something, like, I'm just so happy to have another week with these guys, man. That's at the, like, purest level. I just love pl coming here and playing football with these guys. And so certainly really excited to keep this thing rolling. And I think that Coach Winter deserves a ton of credit for how together our team is. We sit down at the first team meeting every year with 50, 60 new freshmen and the first thing we always talk about is becoming a team. Okay, we got guys coming from all over, and we just got to get everybody on the same page. And Coach Winter's done a great job of leading the way on that. And everybody's just loving each other. They do it for our team. Okay, and we don't have egos that try and get in the way. You want to talk about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Terrell, you want? You got something? You got something for him? Uh, no, I'm good. All right. Yeah, so part of, I think it's, it will sound funny when I say this, but part of the, the key to stopping them was trying to make sure that they weren't running the ball effectively. And I think early in the game, you know, on that first drive, they tried, you know, we got the three and out to start things off. They tried to hand the ball off a couple times, running some of their base run game, and that wasn't really happening. And so, you know, we knew if we could get them into some, you know, obvious passing situations, then it would allow us to change coverage, do a little more disguise in the back end, change things up for the quarterback, let these guys pin their ears back and get some pressure. And I really think that, that was the key. We, we knew, I mean, you saw it out there too. I mean, those guys made some tremendous plays. I mean, there's some amazing one-hand catches. I mean, they got some really nice skill kids over there. And, uh, you know, so we knew we'd have our hands full. But I think a lot of it had to do with us keeping them from having a balance on offense consistently. Certainly, they, they found a way to run the ball here and there. But we really got them into a lot of passing downs where, again, we could keep the quarterback uncomfortable. And anytime you do that, that's probably the best way to keep the wideouts at bay is make sure the guy's throwing the ball isn't really getting into a rhythm, isn't getting a lot of comfort. Um, Jordan, you talked a lot about losing momentum. How do you guys plan on carrying that into this week and into the Final Four? Yeah, um, I think, like Coach Winter said, it just goes to our day-to-day -day approach. Um, not, and like Park said, not getting too high, not getting too low. We're just trying to stay level-headed, taking it one day, of, one day at a time, and just worried about our process. And so throughout this week, that'll be our focus is – We'll have a team meeting Monday night to introduce Mount Union, right? That is I think that's who it is, yeah. Name Mount, is Mount Union, today, yeah. <laughs> to team meeting uh, Monday night to introduce Mount Union, and then we'll go have a great week of practice. And, yeah, that'll be the plan. So um, the way that we've kind of been approaching it is we've just been saying it's just another week, okay, and it's always about us. So we're always just concerned about our process and making sure that we're on top of things because we believe that when we execute at a really high level, it's going to be really tough to beat us, and I think we've proven that so far. this one over here well that's a really good question I, I am not sure what those possibilities are I don't there's probably an outside chance but I'm, I'm thinking from what, what I can gather anyway and it's kind of been a mystery I think each week I think a lot of people were surprised that Mount Union went on the road you know this week and so 
Um, but I do think that there's, you know, they take into account strength of schedule. I think our final strength of schedule at the end of the regular season was higher than Mount Union's, but they're also seated higher within their region. So it, it kind of depends on what the committee decides they're going to weigh more. And, and I don't know all the, again, I don't, I haven't studied the ins and outs of what there's, what the criteria say. And so, yeah, I mean, how amazing would it be to play at home? Yeah. I mean, we would love the opportunity to come back out here and put the, what we call the nasty blacks on and get a chance to play, you know, Wartburg football and Wallace Hoover stadium. But at the same time, if it means we're, we're heading out to Ohio, well, we'll gladly take that opportunity and, and go out there. And like I said, just one day at a time, be ready to compete and, and see what it's all about out there.